What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel everybody. I hope you're all doing great. First thing I have to say is a huge thank you. We just crossed the 20,000 subscriber mark so I appreciate all of you who've subscribed, all of you who've liked the videos, commented, it means so much and uh, yeah this is an awesome milestone to finally hit. So today I want to talk about some Fire Knight stuff. Now we have the 3x Savage drop rate going on for 19 hours. I kind of wanted to rush this out as soon as possible. This is going to be on stage 6. Honestly Fire Knight is a disaster okay it's an awful awful dungeon as far as the tuning of it because these stages down here specifically nine and ten you really have to have specific champions like cardiel and valkyrie you see them all over the place but even doing stage six let's compare it to stage 25 it's the exact same energy so 20 energy all throughout all of these versus 25 is also 20 energy so hard mode stage six versus stage 25 so we're on the hell hades website right here going over some of the drop rates. So this is stage 25 normal right here. So on stage 25 normal, you have a 4.16% chance to get six star legendary artifacts, 10.2% chance to six star to get six star epic, 17.6 to get six star rare. Now on stage six hard, you have a 0.96% chance to get mythical six star gear. It's a very low chance, very, very low chance, but it is a chance. You have a 5.12% chance to get six star legendary. So that's more than on stage 25, as you can imagine. 10.24% uh, chance to get six star epic gear, which on six star, yeah, six star epic gear, which on stage 25 normal is exactly the same. And then a lower percentage chance, which considering you got a chance now to get mythical gear to get rare six star pieces of gear so obviously for 20 energy if you're able to do stage six it's going to be worth it to do stage six let me show you guys what champions i'm using and this will help you know if you're going to be able to do it right so we got a lot of artac teams already um this is no artac involved okay so this team right here this is going to be um fire knight hard which i realized that typing that word looks pretty weird fk hard like i'd be gotta be careful with what i saved to my pc um, because my wife's gonna be like, whoa, 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 what? Fire Knight, I promise, it's Fire Knight Hard 6, all right? Fire Knight Hard 6, I saved an image earlier of the run. Um, actually, let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. So we have FK Hard right here. This is the run, okay? Two minutes and 48 seconds. That's a pretty nice run in my opinion. Now, let me go ahead and start this, and then we'll go over the gear of all the champions. And I do wanna give a disclaimer, okay? This team, I've not thoroughly tested. I haven't done 100 runs with this team. So far, it's looked safe. I don't think it's going to be 100%, though, because there's some times where the Fire Knight did get some hits through. The Cold Heart got a little bit low on HP. She was sitting at, like, 1 HP at one point. I've done about 10 to 15 runs, I believe, and it's looked very, very safe. That one run, though, Cold Heart was very low HP, but the shield from Mithrala is a huge help. The shield from Helicath is a big help. We have consistent increased defense from the Helicath's block damage when it falls off. We get the increased defense. So overall, this team has a lot of good stuff to make it very consistent. And even if the Cold Heart died, I'm not 100% sure the run would fail because Cold Heart's bringing good damage, but we also have good damage coming from Mithrala, from the poisons. The decreased speed from Stagnite is still there. We don't have any poisons from anybody else. I've actually turned off Farrakhan's A2 ability. I'll go, to, I'll go over all of that in just a little bit. I actually have some notes that I want to share with you all um, because there's some specific things to this team so spe specific things to the team, as well as the speed tune and the positioning of the champions, even in the team preset or the team setup in the beginning, that's actually pretty important. Okay, so when we start off, you'll notice that we have Mithrala opening with the A1, we have Helicath opening with the block damage, and then everybody else is basically doing their A1 abilities. We're really just waiting for that first hit from the Fire Knight, placing that decreased defense and decreased speed. This is why Mithrala opening with that A1 ability is so important. Is because well. Apparently, we don't have the A3 off cooldown, so unfortunately, she's not able to cleanse that. Usually, she's able to cleanse all the stuff the Fire Knight just placed. She did it just now, which is excellent, but I would have rather her done that, you know, the very first turn. That can mess up because of the previous wave, depending on when she actually kills everybody, when she casts that A3 ability. I could turn it off, but I had a little bit of weird situations before, so maybe I do try to turn it off on that previous wave. We'll see. Maybe it's worth changing because I do like her cleansing that decreased defense and the decreased speed as soon as possible. And then we have the Farrakhan constantly using the ally attack. I actually have him in reflex plus a few pieces of um, refresh accessories. I believe it's what it's called. I forget. Um, basically the ones that can prevent the cooldown. So we have reflex gear and then refresh accessories. So basically Farrakhan's only using that A1 ability. 
You have the A2 turned off because I want any cooldown reductions from the reflex gear to go only to that ally attack ability. So turn off the A2, which I'll go over all that in just a minute. So he's using quite a bit of the ally attack, which is what's going to make this run so fast. And then the times we don't have the block damage up, we probably have increased defense. If we don't have increased defense, we probably have the strengthened. So majority of the fight, we're pretty well protected, whether it's increased defense, strengthen, a shield, block damage. And then we have good poisons. So we have Mithrala placed in poisons. We have Cold Heart, very, very important. She brings that enemy max HP hit. No turn meter reduction because the Fire Knight's immune. More importantly, she brings the heal reduction. The heal reduction is so, so good. That max HP speeds up the run, but that heal reduction makes the run possible because once that heal reduction goes away, these poisons aren't really doing damage. They're just mitigating the heal from the Fire Knight. So then you're relying on the War Master procs, the Giant Slayer procs, and things like that. So let's go ahead and talk about the Champion's gear, talk about the presets, sell these disgusting flat stat boots, um, flat stat shield set. Shield set's already power crept from bolster, like you don't really use shield set that much, um, but especially not flat stat, definitely not re-rolling that. So as far as the presets go, if Hellcath opening with and then not using his A3 ability, round one, round two, and then round three, prioritizing the A3, uh, very, very important. If your team, for whatever reason, is too strong and you're killing that wave two before Hellcath is able to have that A3 ability off cooldown for the start of round three, then go ahead and just turn off this A3, okay? You don't want to risk not having it ready for the actual Fire Knight. You want to have the best chance of success as possible, right? So Farrakhan, round one, round two, we don't use the A3. We want it ready for round three. So the A3 is turned off and then round three, like I said, we open with the A1. I want to make sure after the Fire Knight does the big slam and he's reset his turn meter that we have the A3 ability. Also, we turned off the A2. The A2 is good. The HP burn is good. The poisons are very solid. But using the A2 now gives the ref uh, Reflex gear a chance to reduce the cooldown of the Brand of Shame, the A2, versus only reducing that cooldown of the A3. So anytime you have champions in Reflex gear, if you only want the cooldown to be reduced, say, on Cold Heart's A3 ability, just turn off the A2 ability. Only use the A1 and the ability you actually want to be reduced on the cooldown. Same thing with Geomancer. Very, very big for Hydra. Just turn off the A2 ability. You can manual it if you really want, but just turn it off, okay? It's make, it's gonna make your reflex gear so much more valuable. Now we have Mithrala, round one. Opening with and then not using the A2. Same, uh, round two is actually whatever she wants. Honestly, I may actually turn this off and see how that works. I don't think she needs that, because we have Hellcath using his A2 with some big shields in round two anyway. So I think she should be fine without that. We're going to see. In the round three, opening with that, this A2, it's a little bit deceptive, okay? So you may think you need this ability. And it could possibly help sometimes. But majority of the time, you're already going to have increased defense from the Hellcath. You're already going to have strength and shield. So you're going to be pretty protected. And this A2 would only bring an increased attack plus the Hex. The Hex could be okay. But two poisons potentially are going to be much better. A strengthening and a shield on your team is going to be much better. So just turn off the A2 ability. It's not worth the hassle, not worth the risk, and then only use that A3. Cold Heart, round one, round two, round three. Do not, I repeat, do not turn on Cold Heart's A3 Heartseek, okay? Do not prioritize it. Because if you prioritize it, then she's going to do it into the shield. She's actually got a very smart AI now, specifically for Fire Knight. So make sure you just turn off this A2 ability. You don't want this being used. You don't need decreased accuracy. The poison's nice, but honestly, you really only want this A1 for the heal reduction, Giant Slayer procs, and the multiple hits into the shield, and then the A3 for the big max HP hit, as well as, yeah, just the big max HP hit, honestly. Um, Stagnite, because there's no term reduction, right? Stagnite, round one, open then don't use. Round two, doesn't matter, because if he's not ready for this ability on the actual Fire Knight, that's actually good. I'd rather him not use that very much at all on the Fire Knight. I do want it applied, but I much more prefer the decreased speed from his A1. So Stagnite has a very valuable spot, placing that decreased speed onto the Fire Knight, placing the decreased defense, plus the decreased attack on the waves, making them hit a little bit softer, you know, which is always a huge added benefit. And the team together works out excellent. Let's talk about the speeds of these champions, all right? Actually, before we do that, let's talk about this positioning of these champions. So like I mentioned before, the team is positioned in a specific way. We have Farrakhan after... Hellcath, and then we have Mithrala, Coldheart, and Stagnite. As far as I'm aware, whenever you have an ally attack champion, they go based on the team position. So it should be Hellcath hitting first, then Mithrala doing her double hits, Coldheart, and then Stagnite. The reason why this is important 
is because cold heart, heart heal reduction, I really want it to get through. But even more than that, I want Stagnite to be at the very back. So then after everybody does their hits, he's going to be the champion to place his debuff from his A1 ability, which is going to be that decreased speed. Versus if he was in the front, he's just going to be hitting into the shield. Less of a chance for him to actually place that decreased speed. Cold Heart, I really want that heal reduction as well. The heal reduction is very, very valuable because that's going to allow my poisons to actually give me good benefit. And then Mithrala, I would love for her to place the poisons through everything, but I honestly value these two champions a little bit more. So this team positioning is also very, very important. So we have some specifics with Farrakhan and his reflex gear, some specifics in the team orders. Let me make sure I got everything from this note. Um, yeah, so all the notes are correct so far. I want to make sure you guys knew exactly. Oh, also the cleanse from Mithrala on the actual Fire Knight. So the Fire Knight is a slam and then Mithrala is cleansing that very first turn, ideally. Now, as far as the gear of these champions, Mithrala is actually the fastest at 297. She's fast. Good HP, good defense, good accuracy and resistance, okay? Kind of a standard Mithrala build. Nothing super special, honestly, here. She's fully booked. I do have Revenge Accessory now. Revenge is going to be nice. I mean, if she's counterattacking, two hits from the A1, hey, can't complain about that. I mean, the Fire Knight has a ton of shields, so this is just going to be even better. Skills fully booked, of course. Masteries. We have Eagle Eye. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't use Mithrala in Arena and you just really want a lot of extra damage, go Warmaster. Warmaster is great for Hydra. It's great for dungeons in general. So you can definitely go Warmaster and have it make sense. The next champion is going to be Helicath. Helicath needs to be fast. He's 281, which is also my build for Arena. And it's also my build for Iron Twins. So he's 281. We have good crit damage. We have 100% crit rate. Those are not needed whatsoever. If you are using your Helicath specifically in Iron Twins, you do not need these stats like this. Minus for Iron Twins, plus for the Arena. So I'm building him for good damage, good survivability. We have Stone Skin. This is not needed for this content. For this, you just want to be faster than the Fire Knight. And on stage six, the Fire Knight is, let's see. So this is stage six right here. The Fire Knight's 150. So you're going to be faster than him. Honestly, you don't want to be extremely faster than him because you don't want to start, you know, lapping him and messing up your turn order. So this speed is very, very good. Fully booked, of course. Definitely get him fully booked. Polymorph, not needed. Um, obviously, you're not going to turn the Fire Knight into a sheep, though. That would be awesome. I wish I could. Can't, unfortunately. So Brimstone, typical stuff. Honestly, uh, things like Phantom Touch could be decent on your damage dealers to add those extra hits to the Fire Knight Shield. Masteries, we have Helm Smasher. That's for Arena. But if you want actually to get more damage, go War Master. Farrakhan, for him, this is fairly important. Okay, so we have Reflex and then Refresh Gear. So basically trying to reset the cooldown of the A3 as many times as possible. If I can reset the cooldown on that, if I can reduce the cooldown on the A3, it's going to be an even faster run, which is what exactly I'm going for. Um, so Reflex, Shield, and Refresh. We have good HP, good defense. It's a common theme on all these champions. Make sure you have good HP. Make sure you have good defense. Your main damage is coming from the max HP uh, from Cold Heart as well as the poison. So you don't really need a ton of extra damage if you aren't getting enough survivability, okay? So speed, as far as the area bonuses, I don't have anything for Fire Knight. So that's actually good for this video because I already forgot to share that. Uh, accuracy, not needed for Farrakhan. Not needed for Helicath either. Is needed for Mithrala, obviously. As far as his masteries go, we do have War Master on him. Definitely get War Master. Not really sure what else you'd even get for Farrakhan because I don't know where else you'd really use him. Honestly, maybe Dark Fae. I don't really use him too much anymore. Obviously, if you're using him on Clan Boss or somewhere in that part of the game, it's a little bit different. But next champion, it's enough talking about Farrakhan. We have Stagnite. Super basic build. We just have Perception plus Immortal. Just make him tanky. Make him fast. Give him some crit rate because why not, right? I mean, give him some crit rate. Make him clear those waves a little bit faster. Give him good accuracy. Good accuracy is going to be 285 plus, And you're going to land your debuffs. You're going to do excellent. He's 334. So he has more than enough. We have some counterattack accessories here as well. Because once again, why not? The more counterattacks we get, the better it's going to be. It's not going to apply the decreased speed. But it's going to be two less stacks of that shield that we have to get through. Helping the run to be a little bit faster. Masteries. We have War Master once again. The Cold Heart is fast. Try to make her survivable. It's kind of difficult because she's a little bit low base stats. HP, pretty low. Defense, very low. So make your Cold Heart tanky, if at all possible. I have her with 100% crit rate. I know she doesn't need that. She can go perfectly fine with 70% crit rate for this A3 ability. But I use her for the wave clears on the first and second wave. So that A2 ability hits actually fairly hard. And then I, I have a lot of these A1s going off. So I'm perfectly fine with 100% crit rate, the low crit damage, 
and then good accuracy, okay? So this is my cold heart build. So far, I've been enjoying it, 270 speed. She does ignore some defense, so she's doing a pretty decent hit. Nothing crazy, she could definitely be built better, but I'm pretty satisfied with this build so far. Now, honestly, I would like to get the Retribution, but for some reason, my cold heart's not finished with her masteries, so I'm not able to pick up Retribution. I don't know why I'm using this cold heart when I have other cold hearts who have their masteries finished. Honestly, that's kind of... Uh, goofy because this one has her masteries finished but for whatever reason i have the highest blessing on the cold heart with unfinished masteries but hey weird things happen not for sure why that is let me see let me see real quick what's going on here so yeah she has three star this one has three star two and this one's masteries are finished but i don't feel like resetting them so i'm just i guess i'm going to run some minotaur and finish out this cold heart's masteries and see what happens from there if i could get some counter attack stuff for her i definitely would um, but i don't have any crit damage necklaces unfortunately and I don't have any thing in here. Also guys, that should be something you're buying regularly, okay? Do your Hydra, buy the Revenge accessories from the clan shop whenever possible. They are so, so good. So if you're wondering where those are from, they're right here. These are the Revenge accessories. 140 clan gold, boom, you got some Revenge accessories. I'm not gonna buy them out right now because I wanted to do some videos for you all for uh, specifically Spider with Artak. And unfortunately, I'm very low on gems, very low on energy. So any likes, comments, and subscribes on this video will help me in some way, I guess, towards that. So I'm not going to be buying those accessories right now. I do highly recommend it, though. I'm probably going to be buying some energy from the clan shop because that's just what I have to do. Uh, so hopefully this very in-depth explanation of this run gives you guys some, you know, I guess, clarity on how to set it up. And then obviously... Get some HP percentage wherever you can, okay? Get more HP percentage, chest, whatever it may be. Get that where you can. If you guys want to copy this, okay, that's not actually RSL helper screenshot, so never mind. I should start providing the RSL helper screenshots um, because it shows the champion's stats. It doesn't show the champion's um, area-specific boosts, I don't think. So maybe I could include that somewhere else. Uh, but I think the RSL helper stats could be nice. So maybe I do include that down below or something. Uh, maybe in the comments, figure it out. Maybe upload it to Imgur or something. I don't know, but I think it could be useful for you all. Uh, this wave, this is what I was worried about, okay? So this is why having Mithrala with that cleanse is so important, even on this wave. Because as you can see, it's a little bit a little bit risky. So I guess it's whatever you want to weigh out more. Do you want to have the Fire Knight be more consistent because you have the cleanse ready more often? Or do you want this to be safer like i don't know i guess it depends on whatever you want to do honestly i think it's probably best to have her using the a3 whenever on this wave and then using it also on the fire night hopefully it's during the right time she's going to be using the a1 opening with so super low cooldown as it is on that a3 ability um this may not make a huge difference honestly so it may not even really truly matter surprisingly she got the decreased speed applied to her let's see how this plays out may not be a huge difference like i said so we are going to be able to apply the decreased speed and the heal reduction, which is very good. We got some poisons going already. This may make it a much a faster run in general, um, but it's really up to you. Like now, all that is irrelevant. So if you're struggling on the second wave, make sure to keep that cleanse on. It's going to help you out a lot, especially when they place the decreased defense, all that kind of stuff. Having the strengthen, having the increased defense, having that big shield, very very helpful. Um, but if you're surviving perfectly fine. Maybe turn it off. Maybe only use the cleanse on the Fire Knight. Make sure it's at the right time, and you should be in a pretty decent spot. So boom, working the Fire, working the fire Knight down pretty quick. May actually get the best time here. We're at 2 minutes and 15 seconds almost. Uh, Farrakhan, we need to get some more of those ally attacks. Earlier, I saw him use it, I think, two, possibly three times in a row. But you can see, the cooldown is super low because every time he's getting a cooldown reduction, it's going only to that A3 ability. It's not reducing the A2. The A2 would bring the burn, which could be nice, but I don't want that being reduced on the cooldown. We have the block damage, which is a huge help from the Hellcath. It's going to help me survive that much longer. I mean, can take no damage from that. We still get the debuff supplied, but hopefully we can just kill it and not have to worry about this uh, two-turn, the decreased speed and the decreased defense actually ever coming back off cooldown. This may be the way to get a faster run, though, in general, honestly. Having the cleanse specifically save for the Fire Knight may add for a little bit faster run. You can see Cold Heart there, a little bit low on the HP. She's okay. She has an increased defense. She may have had a shield. She's not died yet. But even if she did die, I don't think it would have been the end of the world. I think we would have been fine. 
because the the poisons would have killed the fire knight there so now we kill at 315 not too bad not too bad at all now hopefully we start getting some mythical six star gear because that's really what i'm here for right mythical six star but even a better chance at getting six star legendary pieces of gear so guys hopefully this helps you out hopefully you can see something useful in this team whenever any champions who don't have uh blessings just throw on Phantom Touch, honestly. Phantom Touch is going to help you do extra hits to the Fire Knight Shield. It's going to be solid overall. Phantom Touch, uh, things like, what is it, Cruelty, reducing his de uh, defense on those other champions can definitely be beneficial. Reducing their defense, yeah. So very solid there as well. So guys, with that said, thank you all very much. Also, again, thank you very much for the 20K on YouTube. Very, mu very much appreciated, guys. Hopefully you all have a great rest of your day. Good luck farming Fire Knight for some Savage Gear. we got 3X event going on which really just means uh, your hopes are high and your disappointment is also equally high. Either way, guys, thank you again, and I'll catch you in the next video.